I'll raise a toast because today is National Martini Day and here to help us celebrate and to whip up one of his signature concoctions is Doug Coe, bar manager at Burns. I'm cheers in an empty glass. Isn't there some kind of rule against that, Doug? Uh, there probably is. I don't know one. I think, uh, well, I think we need to change that. We can definitely fix that. Let's talk martinis. First, welcome to the show. Thank you. We love when you're here. And normally think of Burns as wine. And so I'm fascinated to hear that actually you got a lot of martinis, you say. We do serve a lot of martinis. We're very much a, a cocktail bar before dinner. A lot of people come in and have a martini in Manhattan mm -hmm. before they sit down and, and drink their wine with dinner. And when I was doing the teas for this segment, I made the old uh, James Bond line shake and not stirred but you say that actually is a difference between martinis definitely it's not just a cool wine definitely yeah uh, a shaken martini generally is a lot colder and most people make their martinis shaken now anyway. okay i prefer my gin martini stirred my vodka shaken but we shake everything it burns which by the way let's go ahead and talk about the two different types of martinis because originated as a gin martini Did. but the most popular you say is now the vodka definitely martini. vodka more people definitely drink vodka today i'd say it's probably a good eight to one nine to one really? ratio vodka to gin okay well let's go ahead and make it both in case you want to celebrate martini day or better yet go visit doug down at burns so we'll start with the vodka martini uh which is what it, most people like to drink um i brought belvedere today which is nice crisp clean vodka uh, we usually do a nice pour of vodka. And let's just remind people too, martinis, probably one of the stronger uh, drinks out there, right? De definitely, yes. Uh, you know, I, I kind of wear you serving people more than two of them at uh -huh. a time. You want to give it a nice good shake. You want to get it as cold as possible with the martini. We always love the shaky part because you can't talk during the shaking part. So always, yeah. uh, nice. I always, I always like to shake it so you get some frost on the glass oh, or on the outside of the shaker. You're not going to get any colder than that. So. Okay, now that's a good tip you can use at home too. So I like to get it nice and chilled and strain it into a martini glass. And it burns. We do the vermouth on the side with our martinis. A lot of people sometimes will spray the glass or put vermouth in the glass and then rinse it. But we like to do it on and the And so side. when you say that you want it dry, that's the whole uh, no vermouth thing, correct? No vermouth. Yeah, extra dry would be no vermouth. Dry would be just a hair of vermouth. Okay, and look at you with the eyedropper. So some people like to do a drop or two. Does it really make that big of a difference? A little bit, yeah. It'll add some aromatics to the, to the vodka, give it a little bit of flavor. But I love the lemon twist with it. Or if you prefer, we have blue cheese olives. I'll Very say, good I'm, I'm good. I'm not an olive girl, so I'm good with the lemon there. So, and just out of curiosity, go over the what, how simple a martini is. What are the ingredients we're talking about? It's really ideally your ingredients are going to be vodka or gin and vermouth. I like a little bit of orange bitters in a gin martini, but you don't need it. But so really, these are the dry, two ingredients. And there's little vermouth, so you're basically looking at mostly vodka, right? Yeah, it's almost all pure, the, the natural spirit of the drink. Well, there you, that's, a, that's a much more politically yeah. correct to say it. That's the natural spirit of the drink. And again, why you only drink two. That means probably TV hosts should only drink at least one sip, or right? Three. Or, or three. Or three? I was just going to say sips, otherwise the show might get a little crazy there. I'm going to move on to a gin martini, which is my favorite martini. And you, you, can really make, you can really make martinis any way you like. At home, there's no wrong way to make them. Okay. So if you like a different recipe martini, like personally with my gin martinis, I like them to be weak. I don't like them to be all gin. I prefer like a 50-50 martini. Okay, which so means? It's going to be half, half gin, half vermouth. Okay. So the vermouth is a lot less strong than the gin is. So when you mix them, it dilutes the drink, and I can have more than two and not get a real big <laughs> buzz on it and not act like a fool. <laughs> and when it comes to vermouth still, uh, usually you don't see that in a lot of other drinks because vermouth obviously is the characteristic that goes with martinis. Dry vermouth, uh, typically yes, but a sweet vermouth is a great mixer. Oh. It mixes with a lot of cocktails. And the original martini recipe, depending on who you talk to, uh, was sweet vermouth with gin originally. But Interesting. The, but there's a couple arguments. Okay, and what, do, what are we doing there? This is just a little bit of orange bitters. Well, that's okay. So it just gives it a little bit more flavor. Okay. So why do you think people got away from drinking the gin martinis and you see the popularity with vodka? Oh, uh, there's a couple arguments about it. I think it's just a lot crisper, lighter. There's kind of a stigma towards gin, but um, there was a, in the 50s and 60s, there was an ad campaign about a three martini lunch, where if you went and had three martinis at lunch, um, Back in those old days, huh? Yeah. Well, that's what obviously added to the popularity. Let's go ahead. We're, we're out actually, of time now. We've got a coupe over here, which is a better glass. Oh, look at this guy. You know what? He just hopped out to grab a glass. That's what we uh, have to make it happen. Oh, look at there. And as he's pouring that, we want to remind you again, you can celebrate Martini, of course, by going to Burns for yourself, visiting Doug, or attempt to make one on your home. Thank you for the lesson of Martinis. And cheers. as it's getting the olives, we'll cheers to that.